Of course, welcome back. It's a pleasure being with you on this fine Tuesday morning. My name is Ron Maguko. It's a pleasure. And of course, we're coming to you live from the Broadcasting House in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live. If at all you'd like to watch us online, the place is www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. We value your feedback. And of course, let us know where you're watching us from. The hashtag, as always, is Y in the morning. Welcome back. If at all you're just joining us, this is Y in the morning. And you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. It is all about uh, matters concerning uh, the strategic thinking today. And uh, I'm going to tell you more about this particular issue, but I, with me I have a fantastic guest. This is, uh, uh, he is an author, Dr. Fred Ogola. He is uh, a strategic thinker and of course uh, <laughs> an author, somebody who has uh, uh, experience when it comes to this uh, field of, of, of strategic thinking and of course I'll be, she, he'll, he'll be telling us more about what he does in a bit but of course he is a professor and a consultant on strategy, strategy decision making and change management. Uh, we are an expert at Strathmore University Business School. Dr. Fred, Karibu sana. You're well? I'm very well, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, and of course, um, thank you so much for coming. Let us tell us a bit more about, about yourself and what you do before we uh, go deeper into the conversation. Yes, um, as you said, I'm Dr. Fred Ogola. I'm mm -hmm. a professor of strategy and decision making at Strathmore Business School. Mm -hmm. So I'm also the academic director of the master programs at Strathmore Business School. Mm -hmm. I'm a consultant. I run a company called Trailblazer Business Strategies, mm -hmm. which has done the 1,000 strategic plans. Mm -hmm. I'm also an entrepreneur. I own a school. I also own a hospital. Mm -hmm. So these are all the examples we are going to come with strategic thinking. And because I've done now currently 1,036 strategic plans, Wow, in the a public. thousand. Yes. You count them one by one. Yes, until a thousand. So. <laughs> Two thousand. Yes. Would, would, you, would you like to, to name those schools that you, you, you mentioned? You mentioned a school and uh, I own a school in Mombasa that is called Lightrace Academy, which I started when I was just off from high school, mm -hmm. when I was 17 and a half years old. Wow. And it's all about strategic thinking that I found it because the school, I started with a capital of 500 shillings. You started... <laughs> To a school that is... Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the, the tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're saying you started a school with a capital of 500 shillings. Yes. Is it? Let me get it. 500 shillings. Kenya shillings, yes. Kenya shillings. shillings, yes. At the age of 17. 17 and a half, yes. When I grow up, I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> Already you're grown, yes. But you see, the thing oh. is that, uh, first of all, the background matters here. Yeah. Um, I'm a son of a catechist. My father was a catechist, mm -hmm. a Catholic catechist. We were born 11 children. Uh, and with that kind of a uh, number of siblings, and my father's income was 1,500 a month. Wow. And we used to live in Kibera in Olympic here. Mm. To, to survive in life was hard. In fact... If you ask me when I was growing up that I will ever finish high school, I'll tell you that's a lie. But because when I finished high school, I managed to get a scholarship to do my high school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, I was independent when I was 12 years old. Wow. Uh, because when I finished my class, class 8, mm. my parents never knew how I earned income. In fact, I used to go to school. I used to be given pocket money. And on my way back, I could buy sugar for my parents when I was in high school. So because of that, when I finished high school, it was race against time to set my family on the map because I'll tell you, Ram, that mm. in, 20, in the year 2000, because I finished high school in 1999, mm. if you ask my family to raise 2,000 shillings, they would not because nobody had a bank account by that time in the family. So that's when I ran to Mombasa and I just took a bus, borrowed money from my uncle's wife and I was living in a veranda. You know when... You go to Mombasa, there are always two corridors where there's people living on that room, uh -huh. people living on this side. Okay. In the building here, there's empty. Mm. So at night, I would sleep in the middle there. <laughs> so you don't sleep there for too long when you're thinking too hard. You have to come with ideas. Mm. So then I was walking around during daytime looking for opportunities. Mm. And when I walked around, I saw that there are so many school going, uh, school going children at the age of going to school. They were just playing outside. Mm. And schools were open. That is January 20, 2000. So when I walked around more, I saw this was a common thing in Magongo. This is Magongo slums in Bokole in Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa. Uh -huh. All right. So then I took a walk to a nearby primary school, which is called Bomu Primary School. Mm. And in Bomu Primary School, 
I found out that the kids were so full until they were putting their heads through the window. It's like it was so hot and there was no space. So wow. I asked the teacher there, can I bring my brother there? And told me, no, if you want to bring your brother, you have to give me 2,000 shillings, which is like his packet money. That was no school fees because it was a primary school, <laughs> government public school. So it was not like admission fee. It was just, uh, give me 2,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. You'll get your child here. So I said, maybe this looks like admission fee. So then I discovered there was a barrier for kids to go to school. Yeah. So when I came back to Magongo, mm. something came up with my mind because when I was sleeping, I could see the stars in the heaven because you were of having no you roof. Are the yes, yes. <laughs> and I saw that I should start a school called One Dollar a Day School, where if you pay a dollar a day, you can learn. That's 100 shillings. Uh -huh. And this concept, I, I just drafted some kind of a concept then i walked a nearby so i'm explaining to you why i got the business off with 500 shillings. shillings so i went to a nearby uh, na madrasa where they teach so, uh, they teach islam mm. so i asked the teacher there can you give me this classroom because usually teach here between 9 and 12 then you close and the school is closed the the building is closed throughout the day they told me yes actually i can give you but how much uh, should i pay you ask him Mm. told me for free because no one will come. So I asked him, are you sure? He told me yes. He gave it to you for free? Free. He believed gave me, no one will come. Yes. He <laughs> believed that nothing will happen. <laughs> so on he, him. So he gave me a key, a spare key to prove that he was right. Uh -huh. I entered in a matatu with 500, 600 shillings in my pocket. I rushed to my, the town. I was drafting the name of the school, the concept of the school, the school fees, the requirements, everything I was writing down. I reached town. I typed it up, printed it, and I came back with it and put it on posters in people's houses in the slums and I asked for people to join in one week's time. Believe you me, I had the first admission of 39 pupils and the admission fee was 2,000, school fees was 800 a, a, a term. When this was paid, that day I rented my building. <laughs> I was able to sleep in a house for the first time in Mombasa. And, and the rest is history. The school wow. now has over 1,213 wow. pupils. Wow. Yes. Wow. I yeah. wish you had an audience here. Yeah? <laughs> they are, oh, you deserve an applause. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so um, and, and, th and uh, that's the name of the school. It's called Lightress Academy. It's still very functioning. It's mm -hmm. sometimes number two, number three, best school in Mombasa district. Wow. And yes. the, the name of the hospital? The hospital is called Halisi Family Hospital. All right. It's based oh. in Kitengela, mm -hmm. next to Yuko's Total Petrol Station. Mm -hmm. It's a 35-bed inpatient hospital. Wow. wow. Actually, it's, a, it's among the best in that area. If you want to anyone who is giving birth in that area, if you don't come to Nairobi, you go there. It's the best in that area. Wow. Yes. Uh, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, you can already, you can already feel the aura from this uh, <laughs> individual. He has a book. And this is the name of the book, Strategic Thinking, 10 Lessons from 1,000 Strategic Plans. And I love the fact that on the very first onset, I, I, I managed to go through yes. <laughs> the book within a short period. I love the fact that you, you, you talked about the strategy's biggest dilemma. Yes. And, and uh, that is where many people always get stuck. Yes. Because you want to get into something you want to start something new yes but you don't know where to start from yes and every entrepreneur yes always tells you this yes that the problem they had mm. was how to start it yes and that's all, all, always problem what, what are just some of those um uh, dilemmas that started uh, strategic thinkers always face uh, you know uh, throughout as, as they plan like today, when I came in and I think I went to the wrong station to the KBC Channel 1, uh -huh. and I met a young man yes. who told me that, uh, you are a professor, I told him, yes. And he told me that I'm looking forward to start up my own business, mm -hmm. but I'm still looking for capital. <laughs> yes. Then I asked him, so what comes first? Asking which business do you want to start? He told me, no, I still don't know which one, but I'm still looking for capital. Mm -hmm. Don't you see that's a dilemma? Yes. Should we start with the capital or oh. should we have a business idea? And I told him, young man, there is no business in this world which is not bankable, which has a good idea. Mm. And I told him that all companies in the world, 64% of companies you see running in this world have some kind of value proposition. 2.2% mm. only have the right value proposition. Mm. Meaning that when you set up a business, one dilemma could be, is my value proposition right when you set up a business? For example, you say you want to sell samosa to be delivered through Glovo. Is it a right value proposition? Is it that you have capital? 
Is it that you have a competent staff? Is it that you have the best samosas? Or you have the, lo the best logistics to offer samosa? Mm -hmm. Remember, McDonald's is the best restaurant in the world every year ranked. But is it good with, because it produces the, vet, the best uh, food? No, it produces the worst food, but it has got fastest service. They are just focusing on 10 minutes you are eating. <laughs> While for you are looking to prepare the best chicken, somebody is not focusing to come with the best recipe. Mm. He's just mm. looking for mm. chicken in 10 minutes somebody is eating. If I visit you, Ram, at your home, when you arrive, will you give me chicken in 10 minutes from your kitchen? So that is what I'm trying to say. The biggest mm -hmm. dilemma here is that do you have the right strategy or that you have the right execution? Because some companies have got the right strategic plan, mm -hmm. but they're executing it poorly. Others mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. the wrong strategy, but they're executing it well. And, 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 and I, I, I love when you talk about st strategy because now we, uh, we are trying to find out what can make a business to succeed. Yes. All right. Yeah. And, and in, in your book, there is a place where you, you wrote, and I quote, most customers already know what they're looking for. Yes. So if it's not immediately clear that your company can meet their needs, they, uh, they likely look for it elsewhere. Yes. Is this a problem of strategy where we have a company, my business, yes. loc uh, 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 located within other businesses that offer the same services yes. and therefore we have something called competition within the area. Yes. What should I do for me to stand out with my business considering strategic thinking because you see when i say every customer knows what they are looking for mm. there is what is called unmet business unmet need mm. unmet need i don't know that ram you're married but i can tell you if we do survey mm. all our wives are not 100 percent happy so that percentage all our wives, all our wives are not are not 100 percent happy <laughs> so what i'm trying to say here is that there is something we are not meeting uh -huh. there's some need we are not meeting even Safaricom, being one of the most dominant companies in Kenya, there is something that Safaricom does not give exactly what people are looking for. Mm. If you launch your business and bring that solution, what customers are looking for in Kenya in telco, they can't get from Safaricom, they can't get from Airtel, they can't get from Telcom Kenya. That thing is what we call value proposition. Wow. So you are looking for what the customer do not have, mm. they are looking for it, and you are the solution. Even if it's about food, before people have restaurants in town here, some restaurants are able to open at 8. For you, can open at 7. Mm -hmm. That one hour difference can make you get customers. Mm -hmm. Even a radio station, even a TV station, like for example, where, where we are now, mm -hmm. there is what your viewers want mm -hmm. that no one is offering. And should you offer that, you can bring, for example, how did Citizen become the highest viewed station? I'm, not, I'm saying that when I'm in a TV station with you. It's because of what? They offered local content that people are looking for that was not in KTN, was mm -hmm. not in NTV. Mm -hmm. People wanted to see their life, not seeing, they're watching the life of soap, uh, soap, uh, soap operas from Mexican mm -hmm. cities. Mm -hmm. We want to watch a Kenyan like Fred talking on TV, uh -huh. discussing about issues which are of Kenya, of, uh, of Kenyan interest. And, and I love what you're saying because here at Y254, our focus is youth. The yes, youth people, yes. Uh, uh, ensuring that the youth get content that is customized for them yes so that is part of stuff and that's why this book there is helping a young man mm -hmm. that this is an ordinary boy called fred ogola mm -hmm. he grew up in kibera mm -hmm. he's a real person he went to kenyan schools of course later he studied abroad mm -hmm. but the journey to there was a very normal environment take a bus go to mombasa and start life <laughs> any young man listening to that that's relevant to them wow but if you talk about aleandro from mexico uh. they, they don't get it a land road riding on a horse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to just touch. I, I know there are 10 lessons. Yes. Can we just touch on three? Yes. Three. Yeah. Just three and then we wrap this conversation up. Okay. Um, uh, because you mentioned here 10 lessons from 1,000 strategic plans. Yes. I don't know how you managed to do this, but we need to have a conversation on this on another yes. day. Yeah. But just three lessons yeah. that people can pick when it comes to strategic thinking. So the first, the first lesson on, on that book is about strategy's biggest dilemma, which I already explained. Mm -hmm. One, the, actually, the most interesting lesson in that book 
is called mismanagement of mismanagement. Uh -huh. Because I've done over 1,000 strategic plans, I can tell you in all companies where I have worked, mm. there is something called mismanagement of mismanagement. Mm. What is that? Mismanagement of mismanagement is whereby you make the first wrong move strategically and you don't acknowledge that it's wrong, mm. so you try to make other moves which are equally wrong to, to try to the, rectify to the wrong the move. and you don't get it right. <laughs> For example, like I mentioned the issue of family there. Because this uh -huh. book can help you in your personal life, business life, family life, corporate life, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship life. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, in family life, you reach home late tonight. Mm. And your wife will ask you, Ram, where are you coming from? Now, remember the first thing, you have mismanaged your time to arrive list. Yes. And now you mismanage your response by asking, who are you to ask me where I'm coming from? Mm. Then, when you're being told, don't I have the right? Then you bang the table. So you see, the first it thing is a mismanagement, you mis of of mismanagement, mis <laughs> of mismanagement of mismanagement of mismanagement. And so in corporate, what we need in the corporate world is to understand: for you to be a strategic thinker, yes. is that you need to manage what was mismanaged yes. in the first yes. place. Yes. For example, you enter, you you launch a product in Uganda. Mm -hmm. It's a wrong product for the wrong market then instead of agreeing this is wrong and pull off the product, maybe do a lot of research study before you launch, you blow more money on advertisement and research, uh, and maybe you even fire the team, hire a new one, <laughs> instead of just knowing this was the wrong move. So that is mismanagement or mismanagement. All right. We've seen this a lot. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. um, let, let's pick lesson number two. Yes. Uh -huh. Lesson number two there. Oh, which the, oh, no, that's a lesson number two. Yes. You are good number three. Number okay. three, yes. we talked about another thing they are called romanticized leadership. The leadership is romanticized. What is that? Mm. Romanticized meaning here that if you hear corporate Kenya, have you heard about guys who are being called top CEOs who mm -hmm. are seen to be, let's say, social icons, for example. Yeah, yeah. We have the likes of Keeping a Teach, he's mentioned in that book. Yeah. He was a CEO at KWS, mm -hmm. very successful. Then he went to Chumi. He performed very poorly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And now he's at Jubilee Insurance. I don't want to mention whatever he's doing there. Mm -hmm. But people think that because you are a, the, the success of a company is because of the goodness of a CEO. Mm. But we have realized that, that sometimes whereby if you pick a good CEO from this company, attack them to another company, they fail. Michael Joseph was picked from Safaricom, was sent to Romania to run a World Bank project of mobile money, and he failed. Michael Joseph can reach here in Kenya Airways, and you can tell whether they are succeeding, they are failing. So what we are trying to say here is that I've seen in many strategic plans that people over emphasize the importance of the CEO, but what is important are the mid-level management mm. and actually the people on the ground, the foot soldiers. For example, like you now, you're doing very well for the station. Maybe your CEO can be said your success is the reason that he succeeds. But mm. people do not see the need of seeing the importance of those people in the middle-level management and the foot soldiers, that they have a serious contribution to the success of the company, the culture of the company, rather than just the CEO. Because so, so, so for us to, to, to uh, uh, succeed, we need strategic thinking applied uh, so that the managers, the CEOs, yes. those yes. who are at the top, yes. can be able to bring down inspiration from, from those who are at the bottom. Yes, like for example, what company. turns you on in the morning, uh -huh. wake up and come to work and show up here and be able to perform well, the thing that motivates you to come motivates to work. You. That's what your CEO needs to think about. What makes Ram wake up and show up and perform? Rather than thinking about, I'm a CEO, I was successful at that company, I'm the big shot here. Yeah, I run a big department, I'm not the big shot. My staff are my heroes. Um, uh, wow, Dr. Gola, we need to bring this conversation to a close. Yes. But sadly, we have not touched on a lot, but I, I, I would like to have you again on another day. But I want to give it time yes. to have a final word to talk to that Kenyan youth watching you today when it comes to strategic thinking what would be your parting shot my parting shot to them is that success is not an event success is not about chance and success is not just about a, an accident success needs a process and mm -hmm. process is the is the something which is superior to you it needs discipline it needs focus it needs hard work 
it needs you to put your attention in the right things. All right. Because when you put your eyes on attention, the wrong things, actually mm. you get it wrong. How can people find this book as we wrap it up? Is it, is it accessible? If you go to my website, mm -hmm. fredogola.co.ke, mm -hmm. you can easily be able to find how you can purchase that book. All right. And you can be able to f buy yourself a copy. You can mm -hmm. pay by pay bill number. Then mm -hmm. it can be uh, sent to you through Sendy. All right. Or it can go to you by some other ways of delivery. And of course, I'm aware you have a book launch. When yes, the happening? book launch is on 2nd of June. That's uh -huh. this Thursday. All right. At Strathmore Business School mm -hmm. from 7 a.m. to 10. Mm -hmm. Please be there. All right. Yes. Looking forward to, to that, Dr. Gola. Yes. And of course, uh, thank you so much uh, for coming. And of course, uh, I wish you the best. Keep keep doing what you're doing. I love this. Thank you. I love much. how everything, and I, and I can see there's a chess here. Yes. Meaning <laughs> it's all about strategy. <laughs> He's thinking, yes. <laughs> thank you so much. And of course, this is uh, uh, all about matters concerning strategic thinking right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Keep it well in the morning. Thank you very much.